Dan Elman here with race number 11 at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. It's the grade two Fort Lauderdale Stakes. Some nice turf horses going a mile and an eighth. Let's take a peek at this field. Stone Age was second in the 2022 Breeders' Cup turf when conditioned by trainer Aiden O'Brien. He's now under the tutelage of Chad Brown and he is looking to break a long losing streak. He'll get blinkers for the first time as he seeks his first win since May of 2022 in Ireland. This is a horse with a good amount of class. He's dropping in class. He fits this race very well, but it has been a long time between drinks and perhaps there's value to be had elsewhere. We'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. Main event, the number four, is going to be up close to the pace. A gate to wire winner last time out. While Jerry the Nipper, the three, has shown some speed, I do think the number nine, Running B, another horse trained by Chad Brown, is going to be close to the pace. He's gone gate to wire in his last two starts, and I think he just seems like a horse that can sit first or second as the field hits the back stretch. We'll start things off with the number one Marwad. This horse ran in the Red Smith handicap last time out at Aqueduct, and he kind of had trouble getting cover. He was three wide most of the way, floated five wide turning into the stretch. He was a little bit late to change leads, and then he just didn't have any pop in the lane. They tried stretching him all the way out for that race, and maybe cutting back to a mile and an eighth will work out for him. His race two starts back was at Gulfstream Park. His first race off of a lengthy layoff. Again, he ended up pretty wide down the back stretch. He ran okay. I think he's racing himself back into shape. This is going to be his third start off of a solid layoff. He could use a little bit of pace help, but I also think he's slightly better than he looks on paper. Note his race in the McDermott in March of 2023. He didn't have an easy post position that day and was firing on at the end. I like him at this mile and an eighth distance, even though he's run better at slightly longer. Grand Sonata is the number two. He's coming out of the River City Stakes at Churchill Downs, a race where the 11th place finisher and also ran to be sure, came back to earn a stakes placing over the synthetic turfway with a 99 buyer speed figure. Grant Sonata ran okay that day. He wound up in a little bit of traffic, and he's a horse two starts back that probably didn't want the mile and a half, nor the yielding ground against the likes of Warlike Goddess. He's always been a solid horse, and he was a graded stakes winner over this surface early in 2022. I wonder if Grant Sonata's seen slightly better days. He hasn't really improved as much as a four-year-old as he was when he he was two or three, but from a buyer speed figure standpoint, he's solid, and he's also fairly tactical. The three is Jerry the Nipper. This is a New York bred trained by Todd Pletcher, and I'm still trying to figure out how he ran second two starts back over yielding ground in the Mohawk, because this horse was three wide and going nowhere on the second turn, and then he was somehow able to get up for second that day behind Spirit of St. Louis. They ran him against Open Company last time out in the Artie Schiller going a mile, and he didn't have a very good trip that day. He took sort of an awkward step on the second turn. It was kind of a, just a weird run from Jerry the Nipper, who was only beaten two lengths. Another horse that consistently buyers in the low to mid-90s. I think stretching out a little bit in distance might help this horse, and he's tactical enough to sit in the second flight. Main events, the number four. Let's watch his last race. He went gate to wire at Aqueduct in a high-level allowance, and this race is certainly no fluke because main event is already a graded stakes winner. He won the Kent last year at this distance at Delaware Park going a mile and an eighth. He likes to hear his feet rattle on the lead, but it's worth noting, he had an easy trip last time out. It was a race where there was no closing going on. They ran one, two, three all the way around the track, so he's going to step up in class, and I kind of think a horse like Running B is going to at least pressure him a little bit in the early portion of this race. King Max is the number five. They tried synthetic last time out in the Seagram Cup. He was running against a very nice horse. That Tyson came back to run third in the Jockey Club Gold Cup with a 100 buyer speed figure. I think King Max is better on the turf. He showed that two and three starts back against lesser competition at Monmouth Park. This horse is a very strong late kick, and while he is stepping back up into the stakes competition, I think that King Max, if you give him a trip and a little bit of pace, he can fire on in the stretch. He needs a little bit of a buyer boost. He's yet to get out of the high 80s, but I think it's in him given the right setup. 
Fort Washington is the six for trainer Suge McGahey. This horse scored last time out in this race during the Belmont at the Big A meet. He showed a lot more tactical speed in this race, and he was on the outside. He really kind of had to work and grind this out. He was the favorite. He got the job done. He's hit the board in his last three starts, and again, like many Suge train runners, we say this over and over again in our stakes preview, they seem to get better with matured. He's approaching his five-year-old campaign. He's always been a solid runner. I also think he's the kind of horse that's at the mercy of trip. He needs a little bit of something to run at when it counts. Stone Age is the number seven, and we mentioned it. He certainly has credentials. He was second in the Breeders' Cup turf in 2022. He has uh, run internationally and has run very well at various venues. I wonder where he is now, though, from a form standpoint. And it's kind of interesting that Chad's putting blinkers on for the first time. His last race was the Turf Classic. It was a race that was just very weirdly run. A horse opened up a giant lead in the early part of that race and Warlike Goddess ran by them at the end. The runner-up Soldier Rising came back to run second again in the Red Smith with a 99 buyer speed figure. Stone Age is the class of this race and he's run some big races. We'll see what we get with the blinkers on. Personally, I'd love for them to get aggressive with this horse. Both of his lifetime wins, and it's kind of funny considering all of his accomplishments, he's only won twice, was when he was on the lead overseas. I won't doubt that John Velasquez is going to try that here, but I'd love to see it happen one of these days from Stone Age to get aggressive from the stalls. Red Run is next. He comes out of the River City. He's not going to be aggressive from the stalls, or at least it wasn't last time. He fell far behind a pretty fast pace over a wet turf course. He passed a couple of tired horses in the stretch. He was a winner. Three starts back at Churchill Downs when moved back to the lawn. Another horse that probably needs a little bit of a setup. He does have a pretty solid closing kick, but he has to prove himself against this caliber of horse at this point in his career. Running B is the nine. Now, this this horse won two starts back at Keeneland, a first level allowance race, and it looked like Chad had something here. And then he went to the layoff for over a year. Well, he showed no rust. In this race at Aqueduct on November the 17th, where he got a nice trip, setting the pace inside a 22 to 1 shot that tired and finished sixth, and he just keeps on going under a drive, winning with a 96 buyer speed figure. And Chad, he's going to throw him right back into the deep end of the pool in this graded stakes race. This horse still has a little bit of upside. He's only been to the post six times. It appears that that layoff hasn't taken anything out of him. And with his tactical speed, he's shown the ability to sit off a horse and win. I think he'll be right there turning for home and he'll probably be the better price of the Chad train runners. Henley's Joy is just a cool horse. He's banked over a million dollars. He's still kicking for trainer Michael Maker, who ran him first off the reclaim last time out. And he ran third. It was a pretty good performance for uh, Henley's Joy who was wired in this race. There was no pace whatsoever, and Henley's Joy was mostly a turf horse anyway, probably not at his best on synthetic, did what Henley's Joy does, and that's try very hard in the stretch to finish third. He's now going to face tougher competition from a tough outside post. The old Henley's Joy, the horse that won the Belmont Derby back in 2019, he'd be very tough against this group. I'm just not sure this Henley's Joy is up for it, but I hate to doubt Michael Maker with these kind of horses now going second off the reclaim. We will take a look at my top selections, and I'm going to go with the other Chad. I like running B's last race. It was his first start off of the layoff. He went to the front. I think he can sit, if necessary, off main event, and I think there's some upside. I'm going 9, 7, 1, and 2 in the Fort Lauderdale. It's one of three greatest stakes at Gulfstream on Saturday. Best of luck.